Hello, I'm Gordon Schimmel, a staff member at the Academy of Model Aeronautics Education Department. A primary objective of the Education Department's mission is to be a resource to attract newcomers, young and old, to the opportunities of model aviation. In response to many requests for information about activities that can be used at club events, schools, and for other community outreach, we created the AMA Flight School website as a clearinghouse for the question that we get asked most often, how do I? But first, just a bit of history. The meaning of the academy in our name goes back to 1936, where AMA clubs functioned as learning communities dedicated to the promotion of science, technology, engineering, and math, long before the STEM acronym came into vogue. We shouldn't forget that model aviation is a promotional and educational tool that can be used by AMA clubs in events for the general public to reach schools with classroom and after-school programs, as well as other community groups. We all know about the excitement of radio-controlled flight, but AMA's education department also uses simple, quick-build, inexpensive models to make it easy for club members to interest others in model aviation. Thanks to model aviation, everybody becomes an aviator. How does this happen? Simple free flight models have been used as a great way to engage newcomers in the fun of flight. These activities may help a visitor to a club event decide to join the club and share in the adventure of model aviation. And most important, these activities make everyone a pilot and everyone leaves with a model of their own. So let's get started with this installment of AMA Flight School's How Do I? Today we are going to show you how to assemble, modify, and power up the model. If you're flying somewhere where it might get where you don't want it and you might get in trouble, you don't want to put your own name. As well as how to humiliate the host. Hello, I'm Gordon Schimmel with the Academy of Model Aeronautics. Welcome to our How Do I series for newcomers. In this online tutorial, I'm joined by Dave Gee, a veteran free flight modeler. He is going to show us how to take a simple entry-level model and modify it for better flight performance. Welcome, Dave. Thanks, Gordon. So we're going to talk about this little free flight model. There's been an awful lot of these made, and I'm sure you've seen them and flown them. Uh, yours might not say AMA on it, it might say Louis Diner, but they're the same model. And this technology is not new. The first one like this was flown in 1871. That's a long time ago. You better believe it. Well, it's been a different plane since, you know. They're, they're, so uh, there's a lot of things we can do to these to bring the performance way, way up from how it comes out of the package. This one is dead stock. You see it's got flat wings and it's assembled the way the package says. But let's take one and upgrade it a little bit and see what we can do with it. Well, I always cut the package because when you tear it, you always seem to tear the wing. And uh, it comes with clear instructions. You want to wad those up carefully and get rid of them. All right. You've got your motor stick and the wing. The hook is on the bottom. So let's start by putting the wing through it gently and firmly because it doesn't always want to go. And bring it about to the middle. We'll adjust it later. Now, this wing has dihedral for stability, but we're going to want this to carry an awful lot more power than it was designed, so we need more stability, more dihedral. So we're going to take our magic ballpoint pen, and we'll just use part of the, part of the plane as a ruler. And we're going to go in from the tip, oh, about an inch and a half. It's not really critical. And we're going to just draw a line. It's not that we want the line. We want to break the fibers in the balsa a little bit. Now, do these have to be equally? Approximate uh, is good enough. The airplane won't care. It doesn't say a word. In actual fact, you want the plane to fly in a circle, so if it's a little bit uneven, that's fine. Now, we want to break it, but we don't want to break it off. So one way to do it is to put it on the edge of the table and just crack it gently like that. If you're feeling cocky, you can do it with your fingers. You see, and they, these aren't equal, and it'll mm -hmm. be fine. Mm -hmm. About that much, if it's a little more or a little less, won't matter. However, now that we've broken part of the fibers of the wing, it won't stay like that. So you've got to glue it to make it stay. I like to use super glue, but you can use white glue or whatever you've got will work fine. All you do is run a little bead down there and that will hold it in place good enough to be secure during flight. I'll put and that back for you. I'm an impatient guy, so I want super glue to hurry up, so I use accelerator spray to make the super glue dry. This takes a long time to, okay, it's dry. 
And the rest of it goes together pretty stock. I'll put the, the printing up for aesthetic purposes. Ah, when we put the rudder in, the grain of the rudder goes the wrong way. It goes this way. Well, the stripes look beautiful, but the rudder will snap right off. So take the grain of the wood and make it go up and down. Put it in so that the stripes are going up and down. I realize it looks bad, but trust me, this will survive much better. Uh, oftentimes, we want to put a little drop of glue on the tail to reinforce and hold it, because sometimes that wood will split during an exciting, adventurous trip into the stratosphere. All right. Now, here comes the nose piece, and sometimes that nose piece fits on snug, and it's just great. But other times, it's loose and it wobbles. If yours wobbles, there's an easy, dirty trick for this. I love dirty tricks. You take a little bit of this wood left over, just a little bit, and you put it next to this, and you cram it in there to shim it down so that it fits tight. And then you can just break off whatever's left. And now that thing fits tight. It's important because if the prop uh, pulls different directions on different flights, it won't fly the same way twice in a row. Now the final bit is probably the most important of all. This motor that comes with it, this blue rubber band motor, is a good stretchy motor and you can get a lot of power into it, but it releases that power sharply. It'll climb very, very sharply and it won't run as long. Well, if you're outdoors, that's okay. But if you can get the use of a big gym or if you want it to stay in a yard or a schoolyard, you're going to need to upgrade the rubber. This is called Tan Super Sport Rubber. It's especially for model airplanes. If you're lucky enough to live next to a hobby shop or nearby, they will likely have some of this. This is eighth inch, the most common size. If you don't have a hobby shop nearby, you're going online. You cut a strip of this, and you're going to tie a knot in it. And by the way, it comes in big packages and small packages. You don't have to buy a whole lot. Just tie a regular overhand knot, but cinch it down tight, 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 tight so that instead of a strip of rubber, you have a loop. And you can also lubricate this with uh, any sort of rubber treatment product, Armor All or uh, dishwashing soap, anything, and it'll hold a lot more power when you lube it. We're mm -hmm. going to run it dry today. Mm -hmm. The knot always goes in the back. And the front goes on the front hook. Now, you're going to adjust this plane once you get it flying to do what you want it to do. And the first thing is it might dive or it might climb up and stall. And you change that by moving the wing forward and back. In this case, we're going to start with the wing in about the middle. We don't know what it's going to do yet. And you look at the wings, and sometimes there'll be a warp in one panel. These are really straight and good, so this is all right. If it's warped, you want to breathe on it and twist it until, it, until it's, they're both straight. If you want the plane to turn in a different way, it'll, it'll turn naturally one way or the other. But you can change the flight pattern by moving the wing like that, a little bit back and forth. And what you do is when you get the thing adjusted just the way you want it, back we go to our pen, and you draw a line down there, and then a little cross line like that. And now, if the wing gets knocked out of kilter by hitting something, you can put it right back where it wants to be. And the last thing we want to do is you want to label the plane. You want to put your name on it, especially if you and your friends have a bunch of identical planes. If you're flying somewhere where it might get where you don't want it and you might get in trouble, you don't want to put your own name. Put someone else's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll save endless trouble for me. Right. All right. The rubber band motor is just a little bit long, so I tension it with my finger, and I wind it, and you can see it's starting to form knots, and it's going to form a row of knots. And one row of knots is a good test flight, and two rows of knots is a regular flight, and three rows of knots is usually a broken motor. Knots to use. <laughs> and if you really want to get some fancy equipment, you can get a rubber winder like this that will turn the rubber many more times than you turn the handle, and you can wind it up a lot, and you can stretch wind it and put a lot more power in it. But this, this is a time-tested, established way for winding a rubber model is with your finger. And it's good practice for playing video games, too. Strong knuckles. All right, so you see I'm on my second row of knots. I'm just about ready to fly this. And they've given us a nice big studio, so we can really get some test flying done. But well, Gordon, I'm going to aim at your head. I'm going to aim just past you. Let's see Good. if it flies. Hey, Gordon, look at this.
Hey Gordon, check this out. Thanks for joining us. You can find other great activities and projects on this Flight School website. And if you have questions, don't hesitate to contact us at modelaircraft.org. I'm Gordon Schimmel for The Academy of Model Aeronautics. Learn, grow, fly with us.